if someone were to say to me today, I want to become a minimalist, I want to live more minimal, um, where do I start? If I answered that question five years ago, my starting point would have been completely different. Minimalism has become a huge topic over the years and it's something I'm very drawn to as it fits my lifestyle and also my methods of creating. However, I'm old enough to remember a time where I had four channels on my TV and I had to get a snack between the ad breaks. There was no pause, there was no rewind and there definitely was no on demand. If you missed the show, you missed it. I also remember having to go to the library to read encyclopedias, to study, to revise for my exams. There was no Google. I also remember having to write letters to friends and waiting four or five days for a reply. And that was okay. And it was normal. Fast forward to today and the world is at our fingertips. Information in abundance. Messages must be answered immediately or at least when those blue ticks show that it's been read. And we have become this microwave society where everything has to be instant. Our thumbs have learned this new scrolling motion that once upon a time it didn't need to know and we subconsciously find ourselves scrolling and scrolling and swiping and swiping and it's become a subconscious pattern within our lives that we're not even aware of most of the time. This motion of scrolling, oftentimes pointlessly focusing so much on what's happening in the world that we lose focus on the valuable connections within our lives that don't require Wi-Fi. There's a lot of confusion out there about what being a minimalist is and I want today to share some tips with you that are comfortable and easy places for you to start on your journey. To me, minimalism isn't just a fad or a trend and it's not just about throwing things away or a certain type of decor or a certain colour theme. It's more about making conscious decisions that improve the quality of your life and make space for you to see the things that are most valuable to you. I also see it as an art piece in that it's like you get to design your canvas of your life and uh, be intentional about the things that you allow into your life. It's about eliminating all of the things that you have in your life that are unnecessary and instead making room and space for the things that are valuable. It's not about depriving yourself of quality or limiting yourself to any specific magic number of possessions. It's more about operating from a place of mindful consumption. It's about setting the filter of your life and you being in charge and in control of what you allow through it. By removing some of these unnecessary things from our lives, we can live with reduced stress, have better relationships, better clarity and better finances. The most beautiful thing about this lifestyle is that you get to decide what is important to you. You get to decide what is valuable to you. You get to decide what you hold on to and what you let go of. And so by its very nature, it's very empowering as it gives you the authority right at the start to decide what you allow into your story and you get to write out the next chapter. I've seen within my own life the huge benefits of getting rid of things, decluttering, creating a, a workable workspace, a space that allows me to create, to write freely, to have um, a fresh canvas every morning to start creating, but also in the way that I organize things. Me personally, I like things to be in order and most of the things I do are quite simple. I'm not going to say that I'm always tidy, that things don't ever get out of place, but I'm so conscious in my own space that I know that I have a place for everything. And when I finish doing whatever I'm doing, it goes back in that place. That brings me clarity. For you, it may be something different. My ultimate goal is to find contentment with less. A few years ago, I started to analyze my life and really started to focus on my behaviors and my habits and purchasing habits and the access that I was giving to the world, the news, the social media and people. And I realized that my time didn't really belong to me. And by me doing this analysis of my life, I realized that I'd been living through this change of marketing and mass media and 24 hour news cycles. And when I say that my time was no longer mine, it was because it was being auctioned and whoever could grab it, whoever could 
take it for a few seconds would, could potentially sell me something or distract me. And effectively, when you think about it, alter my mood. If someone were to say to me today, I want to become a minimalist, I want to live more minimal, um, where do I start? If I answered that question five years ago, my starting point would have been completely different. I would have probably started with the traditional declutter your closet, go through your old clothes, throw things away that you don't need, send some things to recycle in. Um, but today, I see that the world has changed and consumption has evolved. It's not just about buying things or hoarding things. Um, it's more about um, the access to our mental space and also the, the, the demands for our time. So because times have changed and I see that clutter evolves and consuming goes way beyond the things that we fill our homes with and actually the things we fill our headspace with, which one could argue is way more important, I, I identify that my starting point today may be slightly different. This video is not to make anyone feel bad or ashamed of the way that they're living. Most of our consumption isn't our fault. There's a whole world system out there that is geared towards selling you stuff, taking your attention away from the things that demand and require your attention. And it's designed to give information to us whether we ask for it or not. So today I want to give you four tips, a great starting point, things that helped me that I'm sure will help you to start to live more clearly and free. Number one is notifications. Having notifications on your phone is not a bad thing. However, over time, we download apps and we don't get rid of them. And so we have a lot of notifications and each notification takes our attention, takes our time. One pops up, another pops up. And essentially it kind of feeds that beast of everything needs to be done right now. And when you get the notification, you must respond, whether it's emotionally, whether it's respond to the message or the email, whatever it may be, notifications can be very distracting. And I found by turning off notifications and only keeping them on for my productivity apps, I am more conscious of my time. And for me, it also makes my space feel valuable to me in that not everything and not everyone has access to me. I can choose to open that app at a later time, at a more convenient time, at a time that I choose and see the exact same thing that it was trying to throw at me. By turning your notifications off, you can have a very clear filter of what gets fed to you and when. Number two is mailing lists and social media. We'll start with mailing lists. Most people get a lot of junk mail. We subscribe to things, we enter our emails into boxes and unfortunately we never seem to unsubscribe from these channels and platforms and databases and so we get a lot of junk a lot of people's email inboxes are just advertising junk a lot of things go to junk most things that are junk don't go to junk they end up in our inbox and we leave them and then that number ticks up and then you've got 300 unread mail 400 unread mail and it gets very messy it gets very cluttered and i found that um, opening your email up and seeing a fresh slate each day is a very nice feeling or going to bed at night knowing that you've responded to your emails and that you've got an empty inbox is a very nice feeling and so a great place to start here is if you scroll down to the bottom of the email you can simply unsubscribe from most databases and they have by law they have to remove you from their database and so you won't be receiving any more adverts about how you can lose weight within seven days or how you can sign up to this masterclass or how you how you can better how you can be better than you are now you can shut all of that off by unsubscribing Another thing with emails is actually deleting emails. If this conversation is over and it's not going to be opened up again, I delete it. I also make sure that I don't hold on to emails for sentimental reasons, for like just in case I need this to hold this memory. Um, I don't do that because my memories are within me. They are not within any image or any message. It's for me, the memory is 
lived, experienced and appreciated and I carry that with me as opposed to needing to store it somewhere for good measure. So for this point so far, unsubscribe, delete. And the final thing I will say on the mailing is check your email once a day. Set a time, instead of it auto refreshing all day long, throwing messages at you, give yourself a very disciplined time and say, okay, between this time and this time, I'm going to check mail and I'm going to respond to all of my mail. That way, your whole day is not just a swiping, refresh, check, reply, oh, junk, junk, junk put it down and pick it up, check if you've got mail. You've given yourself an allocated space and time to check, to reply, and then close off. With regards to social media, um, very similar thing to the unsubscribing. I would say over time, we tend to accumulate people we follow or friends lists. And ultimately, you, once again, it's time to activate that filter. When you open up your social media feed, how does it make you feel? That's a great place to start. If it makes you feel overwhelmed or uninspired, then this is a very clear sign that actually maybe I follow too many people or maybe I'm not following the right types of people. The second thing I would say with social media is not just unfollow. Uh, minimalism isn't just about getting rid of things. It's about holding on to what's valuable. Give yourself space to appreciate the ones you've held on to. Pay more attention to the content and why you decided to continue following those. And it may be a case that actually there's some other people I've been missing out on because I've been distracted by all of these useless scrolling images and gifs and things that add no value to your life. It's not just about getting rid of things and getting rid of people and living in a box. It's more about being conscious about creating a space that highlights and magnifies the good things in your life, the good people in your life and the good information and content that you can choose to see and see only. Number three, and this is one of my favorite settings on my phone and it's airplane mode. I use this within my own life when I still want to be able to use the functionality of my phone, but not accept phone calls, not have to be on social media. Airplane mode is great as it sets a boundary that perhaps you can't call me between this time and this time because this is my time. This is family time. This is my work time. And it sets a boundary that people get used to. They will learn your patterns. People can only treat you how you train them to treat you. If you make yourself always available, no matter what, you can always interrupt me. My time isn't precious, my time isn't valuable. People will learn that habit of behavior and they will take advantage of it. Not because they're bad people, but because you've said this is okay. My time doesn't matter. I'm just here to be used. Airplane mode is a great way to to start some of those minimalist habits in that actually, I don't always have to be available. My phone doesn't always have to be on. I am a human being and I have the authority and I have the right to just live, just to be without, you know, being a part of this connected world. I don't have to always be connected. Tip number four, keep your phone out of your bedroom or off. This one, um, Again, through experience, the last three, I think three and a half years, my phone has not entered my bedroom. I have a shut off point for it. Once I turn my phone off at that time, people know, don't contact me, you won't get through. But also the benefits of this is my phone isn't the last thing that I'm doing before I sleep. It means that my attention is not in a device or somewhere in the world. I don't go to sleep with the news on my mind or any kind of information that's been thrown at me. I can choose my last thoughts before I lay to rest and I can give the attention to my family. I don't have to have this device strapped to me all of the time. So if my sleep gets disrupted in the middle of the night, there is no temptation to pick up my phone and burn time or try to tire my eyes out it, because it's not there. And I find this is a good practice and this one's challenging for many people because that is usually the first place we go. We want to see, you know, what's happening and have I missed anything and that fear of missing out. The news will still be there in the morning. And so I say to you, keep the distractions away and give yourself the space to just be tech free, just be Wi-Fi free. Um, and through this, you'll find that maybe there's another type of connection that you could be having that's not based on 4G, 5G, 
or Wi-Fi. It's one that's internal and this clarity to be able to think for yourself and not have your emotions played with by information that's being thrown at you. So these are my four tips, notifications, mailing list, social media, airplane mode, and not taking your phone to bed with you. I know that these tips work. It's a great place to start. It won't necessarily be easy for everyone, but by just eliminating some of these unnecessary things out of your life, you will be able to see and really appreciate things that maybe you've been overlooking. And even if it's not to be super productive, maybe just having that little extra time to just breathe and have a break from it all, maybe that will be enough for you. As I said, this is just a starting point. I don't want the minimalist police attacking me and saying, what are you teaching people? I'm just saying as a starting, this is a very, very easy place to start. It starts to build the habits and this is all about habits. A lot of your consumer programming has happened over a long period of time. And so to create a new kind of lifestyle will also be gradual. Minimalism does evolve into being something much more, but there is great value in starting a new journey with small steps and gradually getting to a place where you're okay with letting things go. My most important message I can give to you today is do it for the right reasons. Do it because it's the right thing for you. If you listen to this and you say, actually, this isn't the lifestyle that I want, um, then that's fine. You have to do what's best for you and do it at a rate that you're comfortable with. I know that when you're starting on a new journey, it can feel like a lot of pressure and it can, you watch hundreds of videos and you can feel very scared about, you know, am I ready for this and stuff. I hope this video has eased your mind a bit and taken some of the pressures away. I'm going to wrap this one up now. Um, I will be creating some more videos and content similar to this, things that can help you to be more productive and help you to find more fulfillment in life. and help you to see the beauty in the gray area and experience your better days. If you like what you hear, feel free to subscribe. Until next time, stay blessed and I wish you better days.